That's beautiful, but I just heard you say that this podcast isn't biblical. So <laughs> we'll, we'll go to the next question. But ultimately, church creates a place where people feel like they belong. If I'm a, if I'm just grading my gifts and I don't have love, get out, right? We've been in those experiences in churches where you're like, whoa, 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 th- that is too much, actually. He goes into the love chapter, which, by the way, in context, is not about a wedding. Mary was sitting where the only the men could sit. She was sitting at the feet of the rabbi. Inwardly focused. Careful with the inward. Oh my God. <laughs> Just be careful. Well, and I... <laughs> trying to like recover it. Hey everybody, welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. It is episode 226. I am Jeff. Andy, how's it going? Swimming in the flood. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Zach? Turns out I do want to buy a Honda. That's terrible news. <laughs> Uh, and Gina, she's our guest. Hey guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and it's not a so terrible it's not a terrible Tuesday for me. Hey. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for doing that. But I'm just going to take over for a second here. Um, I just want to thank everyone for tuning in and liking and smashing all the buttons on YouTube, subscribing and whatnot. Um Can I, because we are just in the flesh, we're doing YouTube, we are pumping it up. Can I just share a comment? Look at that. Oh, you've got a a live comment? Oh my gosh, look at that. Wow. Look, yeah, I'm Hans and these Franz and we're going to pop you up. Show us your traps. (laughs) Now they've... (laughs) (laughs) The the guest comes out of the gates early. (laughs) Lord willing, one day my traps will have traps. That's all I want in life. From the comment section, do you even lift bro? You're not <laughs> You are not supposed to read the comments, but since okay. our YouTube section is so new and fresh, yeah. we're getting some fun ones because people are stumbling onto us who or probably, stu- or stumbling in their faith if they listen to you. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> 100%. They stumbled uh, and stumbled. They, p- people stumbling on who would never choose to listen to us, but the algorithm is trying to find our audience. And so you get comments like this. The thumbnail to this clip, youtube.com slash bros, Bibles, beer. Um, the thumbnail to this clip had Jesus died for this podcast clip, which was triggering. Um, I'm just going to leave the name username out. Wow, wow, wow. Bros, Bibles, and Beer. Yeah, the so-called Jesus would not support your channel name. Wow. That's pretty darn egotistical to say so-called Jesus died for your podcast. Damn, bros. Pretty certain if that character showed up at your place right now, it would be like when he went to the temple flipping the tables over. Oh, wow. What are we selling here? Nice. Yeah, wait. (laughs) That implies that we're making money. (laughs) And we're not. We're not making money. I promise. Also, I I do love so-called Jesus. So if this particular individual doesn't believe Jesus existed, but he's somehow or she is angry at our title or whatever. And if if so-called Jesus existed and died for sins, sounds like he would have died for that podcast clip or at the very least the thumbnail. Does Jesus die for the content that we make? Only if it's sinful. <laughs> we'll be right wow. back. <laughs> hey, what are you, hey, what are you guys drinking tonight? Uh, well, before we do that, should we also introduce the... Not yet. Uh, well, okay. okay. <laughs> Drinks and then guests? Yes. We're okay. going to have her blurred out <laughs> until we actually re- reference her. Priorities, uh, guys. Priorities. Yeah, <laughs> David, can you make sure that just cut her out of all the yeah. camera angles okay. until... Let's do this. The appropriate time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we got. We're going to talk all things prayer and worship and whatnot, and hopefully fix um, fix me in those regards because I don't know how to do either of them. But we do have. We mentioned David. David on the ones and zeros producing yes. for us the double Deaton. Hello. <laughs> and uh, then David, when did you get back in town? A week ago. A week. Two ag- weeks ago. From. Uh, I came from Portland, but I was in North Carolina for a while. Okay, with family. Welcome back to the West Coast, man. Thanks. It's good to be here. Good to be with you guys. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks for pushing the buttons. Yeah, of course. All right. So, Jeff, I asked you a question. Oh, I'm drinking Brewery X in collaboration with Burgeon Beer Company. Burgeon. I I don't know where they're from. 
And this is uh, Neon Lagoon West Coast India Pale Ale. Virgin's a weird word. That's one of those that sounds, it doesn't sound good. If anything is burgeoning, is that ever good? Yeah. It, maybe. It sounds I, like bulging. The in, logos in like, oh. the logos are getting outrageous. Bulging beer company. Yeah. Burgeon. <laughs> is it any good? Burgeon. It is good. Thank okay. you, Burgeon and Brewery <laughs> X. We love both of them. Your beer is good. Your name is questionable. Jeff, what do you got? I stole some of your Elijah Craig. I I brought a Bible of whiskey. Oh. And then I took some of yours. I think that's actually Zach's. Well, I mean, it's community. I may. Whiskey. I may have brought. Did you bring that? We're communist. (laughs) Share. (laughs) And uh, Gina Stockton, what do you have to drink? I have um, Spindrift Sparkling Water. Ooh, fancy. It's really exciting. (laughs) Thank you. And I'm I'm having some of the uh, Fair State Co-op Hop Water, but I'll have a beer a little bit later. But I like this one. This is good. This is better than the Lagunita stuff, but it's not an alcoholic. And um, I just like the flavor. So if, you, if there's a little peer pressure at a party, you just have hot water. You're like, yeah, I've got my beer. Here. Oh, guys, whoa, whoa, that's whoa, whoa. so many. 18 this of these. My whoa. 17th hop. So much hop water. It's delicious. Um, okay, Gina Stockton. Hey, guys. Friend, friend in real life and friend of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> introduce yourself to the the listeners and the viewers. Tell wow. us a little uh, You do so many things. I mean, I could start rattling off titles for you. I feel like, you know. I like, mean, rattle away. I don't, I don't you're know. You're a female. <laughs> I'm a female. Yes. You're Indeed. in an elevator in Las Vegas <laughs> for the Super Bowl week. I'm sorry, for the big game. Okay. We're not supposed Don't to say Super us. Bowl? No. Oh. Well, wow. I think if we're making money, we can't say Super Bowl, and that's real. <laughs> you have to say the big game. Good news, big guys. Game. We're not making we're money. <laughs> <laughs> elevator pitch. You're in an elevator. Yeah. Oh, good to see you for 30 seconds. What do you do? What is your thing? I usually freeze. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in refrigeration. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a really good question. I... I mean, I guess now I'll say I'm a pastor. Um, there was a time where I would not say that because <laughs> I'm a woman and I don't want to get, you know. That's a really good point. The plank yeah. Or oh. be called a heretic. Why are you or a woman? that I practice witchcraft or whatever. <laughs> oh my the, gosh. Yeah. Different, um, yeah. Mindsets are. So yeah, good times. Um, anyhow. Uh, yeah. I'm in, I don't know. I've done a lot of things. I've been in ministry for a long time. And so I've been a leader in a lot of different areas. So Andy, you and I met at a church. I was uh, co-leading the worship ministry with our friend, Justin, who has he been on this podcast? Not yet. He should be on this podcast. Not yet. That'll be a fun one. That would be amazing. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Leading a lot of different things, built a bunch of different things. Then I helped kind of lead an organization and build that up. And then it was while I was there that you reached out to me with the church that you're at because the worship pastor was leaving, then the lead pastor was leaving. And what I thought was going to be a casual conversation to help my friend Andy figure out what to do ended up me coming <laughs> that was going to be for six months. And it's been two years. So oh my gosh, already two go. years. Yeah. And some of those other things that you've done, you've, you teach, you're, you're teaching a prayer class now. Yeah, yeah. So I do have my own ministry and I have a podcast and a prayer class, a prayer curriculum that I developed and guided scripture meditations and all of that. Some of that slowed down a little bit in the last year trying to figure out what I'm doing <laughs> as the church responsibilities grew. So I'm still yeah. in that like, okay, how do I balance all the things and what am I supposed to actually be doing? So, And if people want to check that stuff out, they want to find some of those things that you, you mentioned, where should they go? GinaStockton.com. Um, my podcast is the sacred space podcast. We have five seasons. I haven't put out season six yet. That'll probably we're delaying that because of just time and everything like that. And then dwell is are the guided scripture meditations and they're on all music streaming platforms. So Spotify, Apple music, all that stuff. That's Uh, cool. But if you search my name in the music platforms, then it's easier to find. You just put in the word dwell. (laughs) A lot of stuff comes up. G I N A Stockton. Yes. Yes. GinaStockton.com. <laughs> That's perfect. 
You've done this before. <laughs> yes. She, she knows how to do it. She's a professional podcaster. Gina, like us. Gina, I always thought you just uh, showed up on Sundays for two hours and then went home and sat in your house until Sunday and then came back. and, and <laughs> That's you know, how most pastors do it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just praying. Praying. Well, it's, the whole time. Yeah. Well, it's some. Mm-hmm. It's somewhat of the thought of the, uh, the the school kids that I teach. There, if they see me at a supermarket, like, wait, whoa, you, whoa you're. I thought you just showed you up buy and food. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't people who are just at church they show up on Sunday? That's the yeah, only that's time they're they out do. into the wild. <laughs> right. It does say man <laughs> shall not live by bread alone, not women. So yeah, you know, exactly. buying food is optional. I think for. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pray for you. Wow. Dear okay. Lord. <laughs> All right. Maybe that's the cue. All right. So we had this idea earlier and we're going to try it out. Thank you for being our like test subject. Guinea pig. The guinea pig yeah, here. Great. Yeah. Uh, so ha- put grabbed a, a few different questions here. Let me reach <laughs> off camera. A few. A few, um, a few different questions. Listeners, viewers. There's about... 50 in his hand. No. Okay. So, yeah. So, you can see right here. Uh, I'm going to go to this camera over here. You can see all of these. These are these are all different questions. Now, we've got the uh, Mandalorian helmet. Jeff, you've got it here. I do. The, the well, paper will be recycled. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Okay. Let me put these in here. You're going to put them in. I'm going to put them in. Because? I'm going to explain it. This, so, is, this so, is the way. So, <laughs> because this is the way. <laughs> so, these. let's use these as uh, conversation starters for right. tonight. When you reach in there and grab one read it if you want to talk about that then let's then read it out loud and let's talk about it together um and if you don't freak (laughs) if you don't want to read it shut the hell up if you don't want to read it zach's anxious for specific questions (laughs) to actually be pulled he's like i put a piece of gum on one of them uh yeah then you can put it back and you don't have to okay all right zach your your wife did some of these questions because she needed answers about you right (laughs) Yeah, I, well, I'm a dumb old donkey, so I'm like, can you help me? <laughs> but yeah, I need to be fixed. Wait, uh, well, okay. yeah, that too. <laughs> I am pulling the first. Wow. I am pulling the first question. Even though I said Gina can pull the questions, I am gonna have <laughs> Gina pull a question. <laughs> wow! I okay. teach kids things. Oh, this oh, is geez. a long one. Do you want me to read it for you? <laughs> no. Um, there are worship leaders who are gifted and create rich Sunday morning experiences, but their personal lives don't reflect core Christian beliefs. Okay or not okay? Why? <laughs> 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 yeah. No, that's a that's a great question. Um, you know, this is something... I, so, the church is something I'm very passionate about. Uh, in all of her beautiful brokenness yeah in the messy just broken place that she's in i'm still very um i'm called to the church i'm passionate about the church and by that i mean the body of believers the community spiritual community that we know as the church and um i have been walking with jesus i just realized for like over 50 years whoa guys i'm old and I've been in a lot of church environments. I've been in worship ministry to some extent since I was 18, hmm. um, in very fundamentalist environments, in charismatic environments, and everything in between, in um, borderline cessationist environments, and all of the things. Hmm. Can you define I, cessation? I mean, not for any of us, but yeah. just in case there's a listener named Chad yes. that doesn't know what cessation hey, Chad. means. Hey, Chad. <laughs> Listener so, Chad, this one's for you. Thanks for calling for in. No, that's a good question. Cessationists just b- don't believe that the the spiritual gifts um, that are um, in uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and a couple other places that they're for today. So that the, those spirit supernatural gifts, maybe as you want to call them, that they died with the after the first oh, okay. um like Central. prophecy and tongues. Prophecy, and- tongues, miracles, gift of healing, you know, words of knowledge, prophetic gifts, um, all those things that, that, that they've ended. And so I've been in all those environments and I've led in a lot of different environments. Mm-hmm. I've been in environments where um, there have been paid musicians. I've been in environments where there's volunteer musicians. I've been in environments where um, worship pastors have um, fallen. I've been in environments... Um, 
where non-Christians have been hired, you know, they've, they have a, they hire people and there's been a value that it's okay because they're going to be exposed to the gospel. Yeah. So I, I think you can make an argument for anything. I think one of the things for me as a leader, um, I want, we want to represent Jesus. Well, right. You're on a stage, you're on a platform. Um, that said, um, I'm more concerned. I'm concerned about people's heart, right? So you can have someone who does say all the right things, but their life is just trash. Um, I'd rather have somebody who's honest and says, I don't know where I'm at, but I'm willing to be here. Mm. Like, yes and amen all day long. Um, I've had, I have friends. Who, me. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> yeah. Um, because it's real. Yeah. Right. And, and, and Jesus wouldn't turn that person away, in yeah. my opinion. Um, I, I, ha- I have friends who's, um, well, our f- dear friend of ours, Colin Ferris, you know, his mom was a flute player and did not know Jesus and was practicing flute in her living room. And the pastor of the church across the street heard her playing and walked over and said, hi, you know, we could really use a flute player. And she's like, well, I don't know that I believe any of this stuff. He's like, that's okay. We'd love to have you. Mm-hmm. And she came and started playing flute and she came to know the Lord and brought her family. Right. You know, so yeah. I think there's, I think we can get very um, pharisaical about oh, the platform, need, you know, all that stuff. And I do think that there's a, a, a responsibility if I dare say I'm going to lead somebody else at the same time. Um, I'd rather have somebody who is sincerely willing to be present and honest about that. Yeah. And um, rather than someone who is saying some one thing with their mouth and then basically flipping off the, the integrity of the ministry by going and living differently. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Now here's another thing. though, mm. And this is, you know, this, we're going to have to stand before Jesus one day and go, mm, really? One thing that I struggle with is, you know, we all struggle with leadership. Um, You know, we've seen a lot of collateral damage of faulty leadership in the last 30 plus years. And we can go into it. That could be a whole nother podcast, Mm -hmm. how that happened. And I got, I got my thoughts, right? (laughs) Well, Um, we'll see how this one goes and then maybe we'll have you back. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, you know, through the years I've, I've had dear friends who've been hurt horribly. I've had friends who've, I had a friend who married a pastor and, you know, on their honeymoon, Pandora's box opened up of this guy's life, you know, and all these things. And, and this was someone who was beloved in the church and ever, just had a following and everybody thought he was great. And people came to Jesus through this man. Like there was <clears throat> ministry that took place and you're just going, Lord, I don't get that. That's not okay. You know, you start wrestling with that. And there's a verse in Philippians that is so infuriating. <laughs> but paul he's talking about his chains you know he's in jail and he's talking about how um the gospel is being furthered through his imprisonment and then he says there's those that are preaching my chains and they're doing it out of selfish ambition and those who are doing it with good motives and then he says what do i care as long as the gospel is being preached Mm -hmm. what like what do you mean what do i care you know they're doing it with ill motive they're doing it for selfish ambition But he's saying, well, but if the gospel's going out and somebody receives um, the reality that they're seen, known, and loved by God, that they see who Jesus is, then I'm okay with the flawed vessel. Now, we don't want to take that into our churches and go, yeah, whatever, come on, whatever you want to do. (laughs) Yeah, here's the formula. Right. But there's, and and we've built these platforms. Hmm. Like, where's a platform in the New Testament? Like, I mean, here we're going to get on a whole nother, you know, sure. um, spiritual community. What we do in church isn't even biblical. I wouldn't say it's heretical, but the gathering of hundreds, if not thousands of people on a Sunday morning, there's a stage. We do these songs. There's lights. Now we're there's doing the church. Band. Now we're now doing church. Now church is happening. Now church is happening. And then the all important guy with the all important message that talks for 45 minutes. And then the, you know. Like none of that is a little chest is, hair exposed, maybe. I don't even have any, we don't even have any fish and loaves in there. <laughs> right? Jeez. So none of that is is really that's all cultural. And so we've created stages. Nobody's supposed to yeah. be on a stage. I just don't like the forty five minutes. That's well, too long. Well, even so, but when Paul says <laughs> when Paul's talking to the church and he's 
he's writing his epistles and he's he's instructing because it's all messy because it's people and all the mm-hmm. crazies happening. He's like, you shut up, you do this, you know, yeah. like all that stuff. And he's saying, um, even even in the the books about the gifts, right? Yeah. So I'm, I know this is rabbit trailing off the original yeah. question, but um, there's a list of the gifts, the gifts of prophetic gifts, word of knowledge, all those things. And then he goes into the love chapter, which by the way, in context is not about a wedding. It's about the gifts. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love doesn't keep a record of wrongs, right? You know, if I'm a, if I'm just parading my gifts and I don't have love, get out, right? And in all of that, he comes to this, um, I, you know what? I lost my train of thought all of a sudden. We're talking about, uh, Gifts and gifts. the love no. in the context. Dang it. The love totally, pattern, not about a wedding. <laughs> not about a wedding. Yeah, it's not about a wedding. But no, I lost my train of thought. I'm so bad. <laughs> You're on a roll. I was on a roll. Well, but welcome, I got this. Yeah, because that's there what we, we go. do. That's, well, You're welcome, guys. Well, while you were describing that, I, I was thinking about what my answer would be. And I think in my younger oh, years. I remember. I, oh, okay. Then do it. Yeah, go for it. I'll no, hold no, no, no. Um, when Paul, when, then Paul, when he talks about order in the church. He's talking about what the gathering should look like. And he says, one will have a word, one will have a song, one will have a scripture. You know what I mean? That's the that's how the spiritual community is supposed to interact, not have a stage. So I think having this stage imposes this expectation of like a priesthood, like like the Old Testament temple, how they should, yeah. um, you know, there's this holy expectation of, whoever's teaching, whoever's speaking, whoever's singing, when the invitation for spiritual community is that we're growing and we're being transformed as a community. Yeah. And that is all of us collectively coming in and sharing and and being iron that sharpens iron. So um, so going back to that, I, I think that we've created stages that that um, that can lead to um hard and scary things. And that's happened both for the pulpit and for the worship platform. It's like it amplifies the, uh, oh, I go to church and I, I get something out of church because they are doing this thing yes. up there. And, and I, I sense you breathing, Jeff. What were you going to say? <laughs> I want to make sure. Last episode was like, turned out to be all about me. And so oh, I don't feel self-conscious. Don't feel like... self-conscious. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I, I, do, I do like the idea that Yes, there is somebody who is on stage and and but it creates a group of people coming together. So if you just saw little dots from way up above, you would see like a few people moving into this building and then cars pulling up and then, you know, little dots, little people walking into an area. This is what the government sees when yeah. it's watching <laughs> all the religious. But it, ult- ultimately, <laughs> it's it's kind of like going back to like when Kids go to high high school, and it's like, oh, there's the sports people, and there's the you know the drama people, and but ultimately, church creates a place where people feel like they belong. Like, yeah. these are my people. Yeah, and so everything is open, uh, hopefully, in that environment where you can just stop somebody who's not a friend, somebody you don't even know, but you're like, I, I trust that I could stop someone that came to church today, and just say hello. How's it going? Who are you? And and strike up a conversation. Um, whereas that you, a lot of people might not feel comfortable with that. And so I think, yes, there are some there are some terrible things that happen within churches, uh, within the church, on the stage, in leadership. It, it can go sideways, but it is a place where people can can connect and and so no matter what there there's always some silver lining in within it within a church even if the person who's preaching from the pulpit is is like totally off the rails but someone came in it's like i'm accepting jesus christ as my lord and savior today and they just go they go <clears throat> well and uh, you know so that's redemption right that 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 God takes the mat, like even in, in spite, you know, absolutely, in, in spite, in spite of, of ourselves, in spite yeah. of ourselves, something something good can come from even the ugliest and stupidest of situations. Yes. That doesn't mean we want to create an environment that's um, just 
oh, I don't care what you do or how you do it or that there's no accountability. I mean, the, the goal is that we come into a community and we want to grow to grow as people. We want to be accountable to one another. We want to mutually submit to one another. So that would imply that I'm, I want my life to move mm -hmm. in a direction. Right. And, and so that would be the goal. Um, that doesn't always happen. Um, sometimes stuff happens. Um, if we love people well, then they'll want to come in and submit them, be submitted to one another in that. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, can God use people that aren't wholly submitted to him? Of course. You know, can, can yeah. he move? Can, can they minister to people? Yeah, actually. Yeah. And I think I used to care about it. Well, I was about to say, I used to care about it a lot more when I was younger. Um, and feel like if you're not checking all these boxes, well, then you didn't earn the right to be on stage. Yeah. Um, and I'm not worried about that as much anymore. Uh, but I do agree with you too, that it feels better if, if at least that person is, is honest, even off stage, if they're like, yeah, Hey, this is, this is where I'm at. And, and again, for some reason in my head, I, I will kind of make a distinction. If you are like the main leader versus yeah, yeah. like a, uh, someone who's playing in the band, um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's all the same. I wouldn't, I, I could, I think I give more leeway to someone who's like, Hey, you don't yeah. have a mic. Well, absolutely. And, and, and hear me what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not saying, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, I'm no. saying God is not going to stop moving and meeting his people and his kids yeah. that are genuinely seeking him because yeah. somebody on stage is being an idiot. Yeah. Right. Um, and I do think that we all are going to, we are all accountable to him. Right. Sure. So if we have a holy God <laughs> that is calling us. So, but we're, what, what we're talking about is like that blatant, um, disregard and rebellion yeah. to who jesus is calling the the oh. life we're supposed to live right i've um, also played with worship leaders who off stage were like off-putting <laughs> and, and i could barely like stomach yeah. being around them okay let's go to another one well real quick point of clarification you oh, used wow. up all, you used up all your words in the last episode no, i'm you're sorry right. i'm sorry you're not allowed to no, talk i'm gonna allow <laughs> zach to choose and you can oh. Give your comment. Well, Go ahead. Gina had mentioned church being the way we generally, the way church is in America is not biblical. Oops. Um, which I know what you mean, but a, a clarification. There's so much of what I see online is like, what's the biblical view of this? And people that ask that assume that there's like, there's this one thing. And if it's not that thing, it's, it's wrong and you shouldn't do it. Right. And I don't think that's what you're saying about that. Is not yeah. what I'm saying. When I say it's not biblical, it's like you don't you don't open chapter and verse and see. Oh, okay, so six thousand people or two hundred people show up on a Sunday, and then you're going to do a couple of up songs, and then you're going to have someone come up and do announcements, right. and then they're going to turn around and have everybody greet, and then there's going to be a slow song, and then there's going to be a message by a guy. By, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that isn't that all of that that's is so cultural. Funny. Yeah, and and that doesn't mean it's wrong, but when we build our own systems, they're flawed as well. And the flawed systems create environments that can be compromising to us as humans. And I think that has happened a lot in the last 20 to 30 years of Western evangelicalism. And we're seeing the collateral damage of that. We've seen ministries fall. We've seen leaders fall. We've seen, and there's been a great shaking. And I think COVID was a big part of exposing kind of where we've placed our dependence that has not been Jesus sure. and kind of exposing these organizations and these people that we've all we placed our trust in. And, oh, and I think geez. God's kind of going, Hey guys over here. So again, I'm not trying to, yeah. we, one of the, on addition to that, we tend as humans to be grand pendulum swingers, right? So something we realize that and we like swing so far the other direction and then we start building something on the judgment or the rebellion of what we thought was wrong. And that's a horrible foundation to build anything on, right? Mm -hmm. That is heresy. I'm going over here, right? You know, or whatever the case may be. So, you know, I think there is an invitation from the Lord right now to, to look at him and to start to correct and realign um, our values as, as, an, as a organism, as organizations, as communities. Um, but there's a lot of grace in that too. And he is a redeemer. Mm -hmm. So he does work in and through the mess of it all. 
That's beautiful, but I just heard you say that this podcast isn't biblical. So <laughs> we'll, we'll go to the next question. Next question. Well, I wasn't going to say anything. But I didn't mention it. <laughs> You're platforming us right now. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any worship songs that you refuse to lead? If so, why? Why? And does, if any, if you guys have something chambered, <laughs> I have my least yeah. favorite. And yeah. I talked oh, a little I, bit last time. I know this is coming. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, like this is the only reason they want me on this kind of podcast. Uh, no. Um. You know what? Not. Um. I mean, I don't lead as often anymore. Um. But I would say the only songs that I refuse to lead. Um you know, of, of kind of what is in whatever community I'm in is more it's like, oh, I just don't like that song. It's like cheesy just personal preference, personal preference. Yeah. I mean, obviously I prefer to sing songs that are sound theologically. That said, I am not of the mindset that every worship song has to have chapter verse biblical reference. I think the, the Bible is full of uh, a lot of literary devices and poetry. And I think yeah. the art and creativity is we are made in the image of God and we're creative. That's part of who we are. And I think there are many ways to express our love, adoration, our praise, our um, humility before him, all those things. And so um, I think there's room for a lot of different um types of worship songs and lyrical content that said i didn't if there's anything that feels heretical i'm not going to sing it um if there's something i just think is stupid and cheesy and churned out by the ccm machine and it's like okay i've heard there's t- five thousand of that song would you name <laughs> that would you name that song no <laughs> i am not gonna do that guys um, oh, but, then, but but you know what's funny is um I wait, wait, but Andy, if you were to guess what she's thinking of, what song comes to your mind? Oh, it's not the song I'm thinking of. It's not the same one. I, I, oh. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what this is for. I here. was trying. We do. Oh, this do you have an idea of which song she's thinking of? No, no I just thought it would be a fun game, but no. <laughs> oh. I'm not even thinking I mean, of a specific like, song. I, there's just, you know, you know. I'm going I mean. back to my childhood. Like the lyrics shout to the Lord. <laughs> How does the rest of it go? I shout to the Lord, all the earth. Let us sing. Let us sing. That just, you know, the words are just like, shout, let us sing. But every church experience as a young boy slash teenager, whenever that came out, Maranatha. That was like a breakthrough song. Breakthrough. Awesome. But the way the tempo and the pace, it was always like, shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Yeah. So that made me laugh even before I like learned to think critically about these things. I've played that one on stage before as the tempo is just plummeting and yeah. looking around and like, how do we get out of this? Because it's, so it's, it's going slower yeah. and slow. You look out into the audience, there's eight-year-olds picking their nose. And- I sing for joy <laughs> and the hope. If those are the words. And this song actually never finishes. No, it never does. <laughs> In that church, like everyone died there. Like eventually they just stayed, <laughs> they fell asleep, and it was done. <laughs> okay, so there's no worship song that you will refuse to sing, but of course there's ones that you'd prefer to steer clear of. That's that's fine. Taste. Yeah, I yeah. Whatever. I, I'm not. Super- Taste is not controversial. Yeah, I mean, I, I love worship. I love. I mean, some some song. There's songs that are like so artistically not great, but lyrically they're just powerful, and so I lead them much to mm. my husband's chagrin. <laughs> I'm, I'm married to a bass player, Norm Stockton, world, world famous, famous Norm. Norm Stockton. You can look him up, normstockton.com, and <laughs> Art of Groove. Uh, He's probably got a Wikipedia dedicated he, to him. He probably does. Uh, Grooves and Sushi. A uh, nice little web series if you are interested. Um, you know he's he's a musician's musician. You David know, and- didn't cut that last part out. He didn't. We didn't agree to that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that plus, cut that, that right. one out. Free then, advertising. I don't know. We're definitely gonna edit that. <laughs> yeah. But you know, like he he 
you know, runs in circles with like real musicians and they can get like, ah, oh, you know, get frustrated with the simplicity of yeah. worship music and the same five chords and every, you know, and all that stuff. I, I'm not as sensitive to that because um, if people can enter in, yeah, then I, then I don't care if it's simple, you know? Um, but yeah. So sorry for to disappoint. No, no, that there's no, there are no right or wrong <laughs> answers, but I was looking for Lord, I lift your name on high. <clears throat> Jeff. <laughs> I mean, I would not do that right now. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There's your refuser. Okay. Uh, who has not uh, chosen? Okay. Oh, let's see what we got here. Okay. Do not touch my helmet. All right. Oh, I'm <clears throat> sorry. I'm sorry. What trends do you see in the worship space that are exciting and hopeful right now? Mm. And are there any that concern you? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to find another beer. But I love that. In case you couldn't tell, that's not a natural laugh. That was a stage cooked up laugh because I think she means something else by it. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I think a trend... <laughs> Wow. I love that Andy trying to avoid the cameras. Avoid None the of cameras. it is avoided. <laughs> oh, One episode, we just on. need to have Andy just like that. We'll just rest our beers. Was I in the shot the whole time? <laughs> I cut to the other camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Like a professional. God. The one that just shoots the shark just, picture. Yeah. My rate just went up. Yes. It did. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we've hired you for free, David. <laughs> so funny. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so, um, yeah. Um, the question again, because I forgot it. it wh- what do you see in the worship space that's exciting and hopeful? And then are there any trends that are concerning you right now? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's all the kids. You don't have to hide opening. it. Yeah, no. Um, good question. Um, let me just go back. It's interesting because how long has Maverick City been doing their thing? Maybe four four years or five years in that ballpark and i remember when they first came out and that was a very um there was something really exciting about that because they were kind of apart from the big worship movements which would have been like hillsong bethel elevation you know big production big a lot of sound a lot of all the things and they were like let's just get a bunch of people in a room around some microphones and let's just go for it and there was something really raw about it and and it it ignited, obviously, yeah. and then momentum grew, and then it became a movement, right? And and I think twenty nineteen, twenty nineteen, yeah. So, um, and what is fascinating to me is that we have a whole generation of people, believers. So, um, by generation, I mean generation of in faith, but also generation mm. in age. That have never experienced worship out of the con- outside of the context of a worship industry, a worship platform, mm. videos, Instagram accounts, like um, what's the latest song with the latest video? They don't. They've never worshipped out of side of the context of a performance. They they haven't experienced just being in the living room with friends and guitars and just worshiping Jesus and lavishing him with their affection and their attention and their love. Yeah. And that um I want to be careful to say that, that yes that concerns me but I I here's something that is grieving me a lot right now in the body of Christ not just in the worship world is there's a lot of people who kind of think they've cornered the market on Jesus and so they're pointing the finger at someone else saying that that's not right and what we have is right or that's false teaching or what we have is we've we have the right thing or wow that worship movement is dangerous because they're not doing x y and jesus would turn those tables yeah and so i'm i'm sitting here going oh be careful like i i do feel this hunger and call to all to the church to like it's time it's time to stop messing around (laughs) Mm. we serve a holy god like like Look at him and and quit messing around. Um, and by that, I don't mean to be religious, but like, don't take your faith lightly. Don't take your your love for him and your worship of him yeah. lightly. Um, but I also feel this dangerous place of judgment and platforms where people can publicly 
point a finger at a brother or sister in Christ that they have zero relationship with and level accusations that are just ridiculous. And it's like, if you really love your brother or sister, you really were concerned about this group of believers who are leading this worship movement, then get on a freaking plane, go introduce yourself, build some relationship and have that conversation. But to get on social media and tweet or, or go on a podcast and annihilate somebody's character out of assumption or word of mouth or rumors, I think is, um, I think is, is um, just a bummer. So that's a different yeah. situation, but I think so. Two things: I, I I I long to see people be able to experience worship outside of the context of a platform, stage, screen performance. Yeah. Um. It doesn't mean the people who are in those things are performing, but I would like the generation who has been led by that to yeah. taste and see that he is good. I think that's why the Asbury, um, revival of the, the moment. Oh, that like. Uh, what was it, like four days, five days, four days, <laughs> and I think that's part of what ignited that. There was nothing remarkable about what was happening. Oh no! Room. If you like tuned into no. the webcast, you're like, yeah. So it was. Why are, it was, why are they here? I can't tell what's drawing God's them. It was about God's presence. Yeah. It wasn't about you know anything else. And so, so that, um, and then um, just being careful not to. Um, not to be accusatory or judge, judging yeah. um, each other. I feel like there's no okay. To, um, I when you were talking about that, I thought about a professional athlete, a really good professional athlete like Michael Jordan or something. They don't have time to be like you need to be working harder because yeah. they're in it. Mm-hmm. They're working. They're not doing anything but like following this path, and nothing is going to throw them off. That's it's when they pause and they're they have idle hands that they're like, uh, you're not doing good enough or you're not working hard enough. It's like in those moments, it's like, and, and, and yeah. to bring it back to Jesus, it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Why are you not just go be led by the Spirit? Don't be like pointing fingers over here. It's yeah. not going to do anybody any good. Yeah. I think the thing that I have loved in the last 10 years is that hopefully your wife yes he said the thing not the individual person with autonomy that he appreciates the reciprocation of affection wow (laughs) thank you zach now what was my point that you'd like to make for me (laughs) Uh, you did it last time last week for me i know know, it's fine returning the favor (laughs) yeah speak to my lawyer twinsies (laughs) twinsies <laughs> uh i love what has happened in the last 10 years in terms of like the sound and the aesthetic of music I, I felt like it's been elevated so much more and it's and it's just it's just way better yeah it really is i mean and i'm kind of like pigeonholing a little bit into a certain genre of of music which is is that like bethel hill song um yeah. i don't even know what you would call that but it's just general worship atmosphere yeah. versus epic. like gospel etc et which has much more going on um and i think the thing that has been so while that maybe while the the musicality has elevated i I do feel like the depth has has there's been a trade-off there in terms of the depth of the lyrics um (laughs) that are coming through sorry i I laugh because they're and i'm a curmudgeon when it comes to a lot of these lyrics and i don't pretend to have Anything figured out, obviously, if oh, you've man. listened to for five minutes. But multiple times, it's like, wow, these lyrics are shitty, but I love playing this song. <laughs> yeah. Multiple times. No, there's some, yeah. there's some that I'm like, uh, yeah, the, the song is more fun to play than it is to actually like sing. But I know there's people out there, or out, even there, out there, there's people, the, the plebs that are below me. <laughs> I guess I'll put it this way. Like, I, I, I hear what you're saying the the danger in my mind is that like you will we get wooed by catchy melodies right yeah, yeah. and then all of a sudden you catch what you you take a moment to think about what you're singing yeah. and you're like and i've caught myself being like wait do i believe that and then the other part of me just goes this is so shallow it's boring mm-hmm. you know and yeah. and and so like i'm looking for something deeper so when i compare this the lyrics like that to I'm going to cherry pick a great example, like Come Thou Fount, mm-hmm, which yeah. is 
as rich and deep and layered as can be. I'm, I don't expect everyone to come out, you know, swinging yeah. for the fences like that. <laughs> but, um, but there there are other versions where it's uh, that that I think we encounter today that just seem very like inwardly focused. Yeah. Careful with the inward. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Just be careful. Well, and uh, I yeah. <laughs> trying to like recover but uh, sorry, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. sorry you not can sorry. laugh at that, David. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> a little closer to the <laughs> There we go. Thank you. Pull that pull that mic a little closer. It's okay. We're you doing a show. It needs to be engaging. It needs to be engaging, guys. Yeah. Tell me when to start yeah. clapping. <laughs> uh, okay, applause. Where were you? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, it, no, so so to your point. No, I I agree. I also think there there can be a time of, I think there's a time and place for all of those things. I think you don't want to you know, as a worship leader. Um, I want to, I don't want to stay somewhere to, you know, I don't want to live in the shallow, happy, clappy, don't even, you know, da, da, right. da. I don't want to like go to the depths and try to drag everybody into this, like, sell, you know, belly button gazing, like right. 30 minutes of whatever, you know, um, it's, you know, the hope would be that you're, you're going on a journey with, with, uh, a, a set list or whatever, but Back to you said it before. Two up songs up front, and yes. then <laughs> and then and then a mellow song, and then and then maybe an original. No, yeah. um, but it's back to the special the, music. Something that I'm when you're talking about trends or things that you're seeing. One thing that I I really love in in its in small more independent pockets. So like I love I love Vista Worship. I don't know if you know much of them, but they're based out of a ministry in Santa Barbara. Mark Barlow is the worship pastor there. And one of the things that I feel like has been a, a disservice to the church of the last, the Western evangelical or the American church is kind of this um, segregation of your spiritual creativity and your, um, uh, your, your, we, we, we parse ourselves out between secular and spiritual. Yeah. So, so as creatives, we kind of like, oh, do here's my secular music, and here's yeah. my church music, right? Here's my, you know, and you guys talked to, I listened to a couple of your uh, podcasts before this. I've listened to it a few times, but I brushed up recently. Yeah. And you guys even brought up like Amy Grant, the 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 flack she caught for oh. a baby baby, and she was just annihilated because how dare she, right? Um, bring. Um, Sorry to pause you. Yeah. Can you hear the rain? Oh my oh. gosh. At first I thought that that was a fan. Yes, yeah, so did I. Listener, it's not going to come through the microphones, but we're like in the middle of the, the most torrential downpour that's ever come through Southern California. And we're <laughs> in Southern California, a little pitter patter is like cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria. <laughs> but yeah. that was an actual. Yeah. No, it's. That is heavy. A, it's thumping. It's thumping. Okay. So sorry. Good moment. So no, I just we'll thought that, out. that um that separation of well here's where I can bring this part of myself to the church, but I, I have to hold back the rest of myself and I can only out that outlet is only in a secular context. And I think that that's um I think we're called to live an integrated life, you know, and have sure. an integrated faith. And so um I love I love still like Mark Barlow has a an album called uh, souls and hy soul and hymns or hymns and soul. And it's like one song is about Jesus. The next song is about a uh, relationship with a girl, the next song, you know, and, and just that this is, this is life. Yeah. Like I, I am a son. I'm a daughter. I have a God. I, he's in my life. And, and this is all of who I am um, in his presence, you know, and I don't have to sing about Jesus in every song that I sing. You know, I wouldn't, that wouldn't put that in a worship set. Yeah. But I love that um, artists and musicians are not parsing out themselves. Like, okay, here's my, here's my secular artist name, sure. you know, and, but then in the church world, I'm this, you know, um, I think that's, that's a sad um, state of affairs when we have to do that. And so, uh, you know, I it don't is, know. It is. And it's a tightrope to walk though, too. Yeah. Cause I have, I mean, I feel like we've, 
seen those experiences. We've been in those experiences in churches where you're like, whoa, 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 that, that is too much, actually. Trying to find that like sweet spot in between what feels appropriate and, and makes sense. Not that, I guess what I'm saying is uh, not everything everywhere always. Totally. And I'm not talking about bringing that necessarily, I'm not talking about bringing that into church. But yeah. I think artists, even just as a creative, like I'm going to put out an album. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm, this is my worship album. Oh, this is my oh, other yeah. album. Yeah, it's like no, yeah. no, no. This is this is who I am as an artist, and and I have, um, I'm passionate about my faith, and I'm passionate yeah. about my family, and I'm passionate about, and and those can coexist. I'm not necessarily talking about bringing that into this into a church service. Yeah. Um. Oh, okay. I got but, you. Yeah, that makes sense. And on a practical level, like even like the spot bands can get pigeonholed in by. Spotify and whatever was before Spotify, like a, a guy that's been on our show before and did a show at our house uh, once, Classic Crime, they're just, they're in, like, they're the Christian rock. They've never been a, like, Christian band. I'm doing Bunny Ears if you're listening on audio, which is what you would do if you're listening. It's audio. But they get pigeonholed in, like, Spotify playlists. They don't put it with, if I'm listening... If I'm here listening to Jet or there's Jet or the Killers or whatever it is, it's like it's classic crime never gets looped in there. It's always in some of the other more Christian stuff, and they they're just a band writing lyrics and and some of their lyrics are spiritual and some of them have Christian themes, but because that that's who they are, yeah. And it's like the algorithm does it for us sometimes too, yeah. In a way that's weird and gross. I have I have more questions or awesome. I think these Sometimes. go. I think these go together. Well, possibly go together. I've never heard audibly from God. Am I doing something wrong? The other question: Does prayer actually change God's mind? Mm-hmm. I've never heard audibly from God. Mm-hmm. Am I doing something wrong? Mm-hmm. So you you grabbed those out randomly and they mm-hmm. came together, or did you cook it a little bit? Did you cook it? It's okay. Did you cheat? On Jesus. Why don't you pr- Whoa. Why don't pray about it and see if you can change God's Aim that mind. mic at your mouth a little bit more. Uh, are you than, ta- like uh, less, less like an ice cream cone and more like... Hey, everybody. Uh, Eat your mic, up a little. Eat your mic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you mic. go. There we go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Hi, guys. Make sure you finish uh, all your... My ma- first day in kindergarten. Finish all your <laughs> microphone or else you're not going to get dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I've never heard audibly from God. So this is you, Zach. This is you. Really? Think so? Or your wife? I don't know. Okay. Okay. It doesn't matter. Well, it, may, it might. Let's let's tackle yeah. these one at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so no, let's. Which one of us okay. has never heard audibly from God? And I, I didn't write heard that audibly question. From God. Oh, okay. Let's... I haven't heard audibly from God. I thought I did, but I was young, so probably I was wrong. So I haven't, and Jeff. You did. Yep. All right. Yeah. Now go. So, so this I love this question. I, I'm I'm in the middle of teaching prayer class right now. We're on week. We just did week three, and and this comes up a lot. And I think um, there is a a lot of kind of a misnomer, and this thought when you hear p- pastors and leaders or people talk about, well, and then God told me this, and there's kind of this. Presumption yeah. that a Val Kilmer voice, like Prince of Egypt or something, is going to come and say, say something. But that's not how it is. But the reality is, you, you didn't go with Morgan Freeman. That's Morgan always Freeman? the God voice no. that people reference. Okay. Gina, Jeez. Val Kilmer, Val deep Kilmer. cut. Come on, Prince of Egypt, the saint, the best. As long as it's hot, Val Kilmer, we're okay with it. <laughs> oh, Ice no. man, Val Ice Kilmer. Man. So my good friend Val Kilmer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was Tiny Val Kilmer. <laughs> he once was in a movie about Egypt. We're going to be praying by Say Once I think I turned it to Cosby there for <laughs> a minute. What are you? Val Kilmer <laughs> puts the pill in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to sleep in the jello. Oh my god. But he pops. <laughs> goes to sleep in the jello. <laughs> <laughs> so wrong. So many levels. I think God has intentionally not <laughs> spoken to you. <laughs> wow. Needs a little bit of distance. A little bit of distance. So he chose not to speak to Zach. I was about to say something, but then... You're a bad, bad boy, no. Zach. 
it's not going to be worth it. Okay. So you're teaching a prayer class. <laughs> okay. You knew what you were getting into. I, I know. know. You know I you. did. Okay. So this is the sacred so, and the profane. So here's the here's the thing about prayer class. When when I teach the class, people come and and the reason they come oftentimes is they want to know how to pray. Well, how do I pray right? How do I pray the yeah. best way so that God actually answers? You know, or whatever the case may be, the right words. But it's not about that. Um, and people are usually like, "What?" Um, but the reality is, we were made for relationship intimate relationship with God, Father, Son, and Spirit, and relationship with one another. And prayer is a vehicle of relationship. That's all it is. It's a conversation. Um, it is as much talking as it is listening, but is that listening waiting for this um, supernatural, ethereal encounter or experience or audible voice? Not necessarily. Um it's getting to know Jesus and getting to know who he is. And the more I get to know him, the more familiar he becomes and his voice becomes. And I, each one of us is uniquely made, right? So there's diversity in who we are, um, who you are, how God made you, the gifts he's giving you, um, your heart, your mind, uh, the uniqueness of how you are made. Zach, Jeff, myself, we're all different. So we're all going to hear from God differently. Um, but we, as we practice and cultivate our relationship with him, we will start to discover how he's speaking because he's speaking to all of us. Um, it could be just through, um, you know, ideas or thoughts that you, you don't realize is God actually speaking to you. It's funny. Um, we had a woman who actually um, kind of received Jesus for the first time in prayer class. She's been coming to church Whoa. for a month, a couple of months, and came to prayer class and was like the first night kind of like, uh, and we were going to pray for each other. And she's like, whoa, I, I didn't know I was supposed to pray for somebody else. I just wanted to hear about mm. prayer. This is my first wow. time. It's like, you don't have to pray. We're going to break into groups, but God hears your heart. You don't have to worry about it. We're just practicing. It's about relationship. And I split them off in groups. And I said, you know, find, pick someone in your group that that is willing to get prayed for and you guys pray for them. And they got in her group and and she just began to weep and mm. she didn't know why. Mm. And so they prayed for her and um, the prayers were really sweet and um, God was encouraging her through those things. And then one of the people in the group just looked at her and said, can I ask you a question? Have you ever received Jesus as the Lord of your life? And she's like, I think that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, and she's that's like, so well, sweet. can I pray with you now? You mm. know? And she came, you know, she, she's come every week and, um, this is all brand new to her. And this last week, uh, the week before was on the Holy Spirit and listening. And she's like, yeah, I don't hear God's voice. I don't think I don't hear. And I've been praying. I've been asking to hear. And I don't hear. I don't hear. I don't hear. Except, you know, today I was um, uh, I had written down some stuff. And then for some reason, the word listen just popped into my head. And I don't. And it just was. It, and she was even going. It was right here. Mm. <laughs> you know, it was like, listen. And then and then it was like patience like be patient you know and it's mm. like yeah that's that's the holy spirit speaking to you like it doesn't have to be this big grand thing it's not this thus says the lord or this suddenly holy voice it's it's a learning that he is with you always and he is moving and he is um he is speaking through people through um thoughts that you have through um a, a sense that you have, I think I'm supposed to do this, or I think I'm supposed to go here. Um, and, you know, we talk about testing, you know, is that the Lord? Is yeah. that not? Does it line up with his character? Is it contradict maybe the character of God? Then it's probably not him, but um, there are ways to kind of go, Lord, is that you? And, you know, confirmation, <laughs> but um, you probably hear God more than you realize you do. And, um, in prayer class, the invitation is to start paying attention and listening. And by listening, it doesn't mean like, what was that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. but listening in like being aware because he is moving and he is talking and he is with us. So yeah. I have a, <clears throat> this is, man, I've got a theory and I'm going to do a little advocating for the dark Lord for a second here. <laughs> and then maybe, Darth you, Vader? You guys you guys correct me. <laughs> I'm your father. Um give me that helmet real quick. One, I f I love everything you just said. And by the way, let me just say 
every time you speak and preach and teach at church, it's like, um, even if I'm not there specifically, cause I'm a little bit, I'm off the map on a lot of things, um, comparatively to most Christians. So even if I, I disagree with something or, or uh, I'm not where you're at, I, I believe you a hundred percent. And I love listening to you because it's like, I don't question anything you're saying. And that's not always tr- true. I, I, a lot of people I listen to, I'm like, that's bullshit. I'm not sure that person believed it. And I'm not talking specifically with our church. So if anyone happens to listen, but just in general, listening to people preach and I listen to a ton of podcasts. Um, and so that I appreciate that you about, I appreciate that about you. Um, when it comes to saying, I feel like God told me, I right now I'm in the spot where it's like, I wish nobody would say that ever. Just yeah. don't. Because when that goes wrong, yeah. it goes wrong in the worst way. You got the weight of heaven and earth and a eternality, eternal consequences p- potentially because, oh, I can't disagree with what God said. And if God said that, God told me to buy yeah. that Bitcoin or that, what, that pastor right now that, that went viral. I don't know his name, but... He's, oh, yeah. he it's... set up a crypto fund that God told him to set up. People lost tons of money and it's worth yeah. nothing now. Um, Cristo fund. And listening to that guy, I'm like, I, I kind of believe he felt like God was telling him, which leads to my uh, hypothesis. I, I don't not think, if that makes any sense, that God speaks to us. Like, I, I think that happens, but... I don't think it ever happens undistilled. It's always filtered through our experience and our cultural upbringing um, and things we've been brought up to believe. And so sometimes we get close to what God is telling people. And a lot of times we don't. And when it goes wrong, it goes wrong in the worst way. And so what, I don't know, that that's a word yeah. salad. What do you think about No, I that? think that's good. Um, Yes, you. I mean, you want to. I mean, one of the first things we say, what I when I'm teaching is like, we don't say, "Thus says the Lord." Like, you, um, is God speaking? Is He moving? Is He leading? Yes. If you are gonna dare get up and tell somebody else that God is saying this to you, you know, that's that's a whole nother level of um. You better be sure that this is a gift that God's giving you, and you better um test it. So. First Thessalonians 5, I think it's First Thessalonians 5, 16. It says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. Then it says, do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, right? So there's this, God's giving this invitation to listen to him, to like, to be open, but don't just receive everything um, in an instant, there needs to be accountability and testing. There needs to be confirmation. Um, does this line up with this word? Do other people bear witness to it? Like, am I, is there something that I'm like, oh, that doesn't resonate, resonate that there's some, my discern, like we want to cultivate discernment. How do we cultivate yeah. discernment? We do that by spending time with just getting to know Jesus, right? So, so we talk about counterfeit. Discernment has to go with anything in our walk with Jesus and how we listen and how the gifts are being utilized, right? Um, and discernment, it's like, um, you know, counterfeit um, counterfeit money in the U.S. The task force that are policing that don't study the counterfeits. They don't study all the new counterfeits they can't keep up. They study the real thing. Mm. Like so much mm. that when something comes up that is a counterfeit, they see it immediately. Yeah. Because they know what the real thing is. They know the voice of God. Now, you're right. Like ev- we all view the word, <laughs> our experience in church, uh, worship through all of us. We're uh, South Orange County, upper middle class, <laughs> you know, white, you know, lens. And Part of a lot of the things that have been messy in the church in America in the last, you know, 50 years is because we've had this kind of entitled, weird, white American lens that we've, individualist lens that we've seen everything with. And the reality is every one of us are going to stand before Jesus one day and be shocked at the things we thought we knew, right? And shocked at the things we didn't see that was right in front of our faces. 
But if we pull back and we believe that God is God, that there is a God, Father, Son, and Spirit, who is love, who is motivated by and um, his character and who he is, is is love, and that um, he is in pursuit of us, uh, his creation, his, uh, the Imago Dei, those of us that were made in his image. If we believe that um, he made us for that intimate relationship, that relationship was broken and he is uh, Jesus came to reconcile that back and to bring that relationship, then I think we can believe and trust that he is present, he is moving, and he is speaking. I may not always overtly hear him, um, but I do hear him. I think we can run far away. You know, um, again, we're pendulum swingers, so we can we can go. Um, you know, these fresh moves of God come in and kind of shake up like uh, the Pharisaical or the religious calcification of, mm. of you know, uh, churches, you know, through church history and kind of blows through and brings yeah. this fresh wind, fresh fire, you know, like the yeah. book of Acts and it yeah. has to bust through. And eventually those waves recede and then mm. people try to perpetuate it then in their own strength. The supernatural, they try to keep it going. And that's when things get wonky and weird, right? Mm. And then we th see that it's wonky and weird, and then we desperately try to shut it down. And our reaction is to hightail it again, yeah. completely the opposite direction, and shut it all down. Uh, and I think that there's there's an invitation from the Lord, because there's there's a lot of mystery with him. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I think you hear... You hear him more than you realize. I think he's present with you more than you realize. Um, I think uh, you are probably led by him more than you realize, and that's and but it's okay to not. Um, and and I agree with you. There's a lot of damage that's been done by people thinking they've heard from God, and you know. But here's the thing with even spiritual gifts and the Holy Spirit and stuff is that they're gifts. So um, they're not. Uh, there's no qualifications. It's not like you have to reach a certain level of maturity and then ding, 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 you get a gift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh, hey, you passed this level of class. You're this mature and now you get this gift. No, they're gifts. And that means we can use them right and use them wrong. We can abuse them. We can, oh, you know, whatever. An and idea. like yeah. Peter in the garden lopping off an ear with a sword and Jesus like, you know, um, I he was think, given the gift of swordplay. <laughs> he had to give us something. Yeah. So, I, you know, yeah. Why? I, you know, there's a mess. There is a mess and, in this whole. And maybe thing. that's some of the times that we experience it, like you described. I, I have been in. I have been in those conversations before that that someone will say, "God told me," and and it is a conversation ender. Yeah. Be because how am I supposed to respond? Well. To well, God told you that, okay, well, right? And it, we're done. Talking. And when I hear that, I'm like, yeah, and that was for you. Like, you take that, and whatever that's doing in your life—that's your truth, not my truth. Well, no, it's not even that. Like, it, we've talked about this before, where someone's like, okay, I would like, I would like the microphone now to tell everybody, like, God told me this, but yeah, it wasn't for the 300 people that are out here. It was for you. Like take that and run with it in your life in that the Holy Spirit has spoken far, to you. Far away. <laughs> take it and run off into and, the and, hills. And back to prayer. Um I I remember asking um worship leader and pastor at our church years ago, just I was so new, I had no idea. I'm like, I just I'm trying to grasp things. I'm like, how do you pray? Mm. How, how do you pray? And <laughs> The the at the time the worship leader was like, I don't know, hey, what do you do? It was like, well, you know, there's uh, you know, just affirmation and blah blah blah. And I was like, okay. It wasn't until I was standing on a mountain at a men's camp where I was having a conversation with a guy and he turned around and prayed for me mm. that just I was weeping. Mm. And at that moment, like everything changed in okay, you know, praying for myself, but praying for others is like reaching out as the hands and feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That is it. Mm -hmm. And But for me, yeah, it's not like God told me that we should do prayer this way. It's That is no. for me because I, the Holy Spirit, yeah. God spoke through that person yeah. to me. And that is 
how I will now for until something changes, that's how I will live my prayer life. And because it goes back to its relationship, right? Mm-hmm. It's relationship. It's how that's how we bear one another's yes. burdens. It's how we care for one another is is through prayer, right? And that's how we have communion with God, it's conversation. So going back to that first Thessalonians verse, rejoice, always pray without ceasing and everything, give thanks. Like those three things, it's like, okay, what? Okay, for a monk, maybe up in a castle somewhere, that that's what they can do all day long. But all it is, is inviting God, being aware of and inviting him to be present with us in everything. Like, okay, we're going to the grocery store and I'm tired and I don't want to be bothered. God, what do I, you know, <laughs> like, dang it, you know it's what like I mean? An operating just, posture, like yeah, a modus operandi. It's just being present with him and letting him be present with you because he already is. And then what, what could that lead to? Yeah. And, you know, I bet, you know, it's like you go to the grocery store and maybe you stand in line and for some reason you see the cashier and you're like, man, I wonder, like, you just feel this compelling to say something or to encourage them. Like, that's the whole that's the Holy spirit. You know, that's that. I I feel like that's, that can be God just kind of nudging you. Like how many invitations let's, let's not even put it as he's saying, do this. There's invitations from the Lord all day long, every day. He's constantly to see him, to to see him, to see him moving, to be aware of other people, to love them, to like encourage them. And, and that's all, I think that's all, um, he can lead us in those things. But um, that's, I, you know, I, I what I like to say is like, what's what's in biblical normal? Now, again, going back to your thing, it's like biblical. But I mean, like, is that biblical? No, but but I'm saying like, what's biblical? Like, we, we talk about, oh, supernatural. And we try to like make it like conjure something up or, or you know, we're, but I think the supernatural is more natural than we think it is. It's more how we are wired than we realize. I feel like and there is only natural. Yeah. And we're so distracted by so much now. Like we were not designed yeah. to live the way we're living. And um, I just think there's more there's more relationship and more of that um, that's happening than we are able to be aware of. Should we pull one more one more question out of the hat? What do you think? Or maybe so. There was the second one. I don't know if you. I think we kind of nailed it. Yeah, just does, throw does it away. Prayer actually change God's mind. Oh, yeah. Uh, the answer is no. <laughs> no. But well, it we'll is just, no. I well, agree. Well, actually, what if we do? Um, what if we do a little rapid round? We try to get through like two or three more. Oh, I oh. like it. Okay, we'll go quick and, and give and like we'll land thirty seconds. Everybody gets okay. thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Okay. I like it. I like it. Okay. Here, you guys pull. Everybody will uh, throw one out there. Oh. Wait, this is not a three. Well, yeah. All wor- all it has worship, to be. All worship is technically idolatry changed my mind. I did that. Well, <laughs> that okay. Uh, so, so the commandments, you shall have no other gods before me. Right? So we are Which implies there are high. other gods, but we'll leave that alone for a different episode. Okay, continue. <laughs> is God an idol? Well, w- when I wrote that... And just, spoiler alert, I wrote that. Should I have been claiming all of the other questions that came from me? <laughs> I had two in there. <laughs> and I'm thrilled this one came up. <laughs> what, my, where my the heart behind that is like, and this is not like a, I'm not a fundamentalist about worship or anything else. I'm very much open to... 10 al- seconds left. Oh, shit. Uh, but definitionally when whatever you're thinking about when you're singing and worshiping or ha- whatever you view wor- worship as definition- and thanks for sharing with us Zach, the next one. <laughs> definitionally it's less than god and and so is technically that, a, is that, that feels I, like I looking for reasons you to have, not worship you have, an, you have an image of well to maybe to like take oh now i'm worshiping god because i'm singing to an idea of god when re- in reality, I I view worship as like you're at the grocery store. What are you open to? Mm-hmm. Like, how are you gonna? Well, somebody all, all somebody might be worship. hurting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's that's where I'm. That's where, I guess that's where my right. heart so, is. Right. So so we we yeah we we've we've pigeonholed worship into the 20, 30 minutes. Uh, yeah. You know of music. It's in a, a worship it's a service. genre it's now. A genre, but that that's an aspect. That's a facet of a very multi. It's of life, really. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, this is quick. Our Sunday morning worship teams really just Christian cover bands. 
I mean, yeah. Thank you. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, so you know what's really interesting? Back in back the the hymns, the yeah. the hymns, which is the yeah. irony here is that when like back in the Jesus movement, when the new worship choruses were coming out, and the the older people are like, those are not, yeah, you know, godly, yeah. and but the hymns were all many of them were bar pub songs that they changed the lyrics yeah. to. So, yes, in essence, yes. Yes. Nice. She agrees. Okay. Nice. Uh, here we go. Uh, I love this one. What's the biggest train wreck worship moment you've ever experienced, and how long did it take you to recover? Oh, oh. Lord. <sighs> there have been a lot. Uh, Stream of consciousness, first thing that pops to yeah. mind. Uh Oh, well this was this this probably wasn't necessarily the worst but this is the most recent and the one that was like crap really. So I was leading at Shoreline, Trevor Kelso had had me come in to sub for him. And um it was great, great band and everything and we're doing the blessing. And the blessing has that high you know over and over again and so we're going and it it's like end. at that top end of my range so you're that. belting <laughs> the band for some inexplicable reason we did not rehearse it like this dumps May your presence come up and they, and they leave you hanging they left me hanging and, <laughs> oh. I, and this is what i did i'm like got to hide you and beside you, <laughs> and within you, spoken word, spoken word. And with that, and I went have in, a wonderful Sunday. And I went into a prayer. Oh That's, my gosh! I actually did that. So you're welcome. Uh, and hasn't been back since. So good job. Go. Oh, shoot. Uh, hey, quick. Just in Bethel kidding. music, helpful or harmful? Helpful. Uh, here's a real easy one. Women in church leadership. What's your position? <laughs> have you have you been Oh, have you seen this done well or poorly? Women in church leadership. Yeah. Um, I I grew up in a very fundamentalist um, denomination. So, so much so that when I was in my 20s, I wasn't even allowed as a woman to lead worship for an entire service. I could be a part of a worship team and maybe lead out a bit of a song. But but you're not leading, you're complimenting, I think. I was, yeah. Um. So the whole idea of being in leadership wasn't even a possibility or on the grid. And yet I'm someone who has leadership gifts. So that was a weird juxtaposition. So I never imagined that that was even something I could do or should do or that it was a possibility mm. for me. The churches that I've served at in leadership, both as volunteer and staff, I was never in a place where the, that was affirmed. Uh, the church you and I were at was not affirmed. I've never held... I have never actually to this day held the title for what I actually do. I've never been a staff pastor. I've never been a worship pastor. I've mm. never been the leader of the ministry because of those things. Gina Stockton, but, helper. <laughs> so um, I have to say coming to, coming to the church that we're at now um, is honestly the first time that I've actually been received fully as a leader as a woman and it was a little mm. bit like wait um you, do you okay you sure you sure you okay <laughs> this is you, me Here's you okay that. with that this feels different um, i never preached on a sunday until i did at that church so i have oh. taught on a sunday exactly eight times and they've all been in that context really there yeah it doesn't now, feel like eight times yeah i think it's been eight I mean, you're saying it feels like it's been forever. What yeah, are you saying? Yeah, it doesn't like feel it's been like super yeah. long. So, so yeah. all of that to say is, I, I will be honest, I wrestled like Norm and I both, like we, I grew up not believing that women should be pastors. So I had mm. to wrestle with that and go, Lord, is this okay? Like, I want to be obedient to you. I don't want to, you know, practice heresy. I don't want to yeah. be deceived. Like, you have to wrestle with all the things and kind of go, and then, and then going back to that paradigm and lens, you know, um, you we read the Bible with that lens. Like it's just been in the last few years that I'm I'm seeing verses I've read a million times and went going, wait, I never even saw Junia. <laughs> mm. Like actually, I never saw that Phoebe was a leader and a deacon. I never correlated the reality that you know m the whole Mary Martha narrative has always been about. Martha being too busy and 
and Mary resting, but reality, she, Mary was sitting where the only the men could sit. She was sitting at the feet of the rabbi, which was reserved for men. Mm. And Jesus rebuked Martha and said, no, she she belongs here. Like Jesus absolutely brought more uh, uh, yeah. liberation and open doors for women, but I never even saw that. Mm. I So I've been on a journey as a woman kind of going, Lord, what do I do with this? What do I do with the fact that I kind of stumble into leadership, but then I'm not allowed to have leadership, but I'm kind of used for my leadership, but that's okay, but it's not okay for mm. me to be, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I've had to wrestle through and go through a lot of healing and process a lot of stuff with the Lord. That's good. In connection with that, are there feminine and masculine differences in worship? And if so, how do you experience that? Should the church be doing anything in terms of leadership because of these differences? Differences between feminine and masculine worship. Um, I, I think that there are certainly, I mean... Do you think women worship leaders choose different types of songs compared to men? Uh, some do. Um, what I think the ironic thing is, I think some of the songs that you guys, some of you might consider very feminine lyrics and stuff are co-written by men (laughs) or written by men. Um, so, um, but yes, I think God said, let us make them in our image. So male and female, he made them. So male and female, um, both have an expression and facets of who God is. And there's viewpoints and perspectives and heart Mm -hmm. um, that are um, uniquely expressed in each. And I think both are necessary in the context of worship. That's beautiful. And and there's a, um, what's up? You can read mine. I've been holding that one. Oh, no, you read yours. Um, are Are they gone? Did we make it through? No, there's one more, and I toss some others. There's a uh, on the femininity masculinity thing. Like, there's also in general, like a lot of the artist type men are. If there is like the most masculine dude, which is Arnold Schwarzenegger or some somebody like that, um, there's you artistic know artistic guys. Are artistic more guys in are touch generally with yeah. There's side. a little bit of more femininity, and it's I, I don't think our it's wrong. Our friend Justin to, has more shoes than I do. <laughs> and most women I know and and he is an incredible artist and he's a dude and he's you know like all the things so I mean they're they're you know like well let's are we gonna get hyper stereotypical like oh this is a this is a dude song it's a you know it's a it's anthem a bro it's anthem a, yeah, da, 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 you know or whatever and then there's the how dare you oh, stereotype the, the you know, bro reckless loves like uh you know yeah um but I, you know, I, I think you I think saw both me can... standing there, <laughs> crying inside what, my heart. Do you see "Reckless Love" as a feminine or masculine song? Uh, do you think God's love know. is reckless? Do you think He's really reckless? Oh my with his gosh! Love? I, I, so many people <laughs> say that it's so funny. Is He no, reckless? I'm just, I'm is just it, pulling out a song. Do we serve yeah, a yeah, reckless no. God? I okay. agree. You know? uh, well, I, He's reckless. It's just willy nilly. Love is all around. You just need to. Open up to the idea of it. It's seemingly reckless. All right. What are some doubts, if any, you wrestle with regarding your theology of prayer? That's a pretty short answer. <laughs> um, I don't know that I wrestle with my theology. I hold my theology loosely because I know there's a lot I don't know and a lot I don't understand. Uh, I've been walking with Jesus, like I said, for over 50 years. Um, And my relationship with Jesus has shifted and changed through experiences, and we can get into all sorts of manner of stuff. Um, I have, uh, you know, I want to be careful with, just my family and stuff, but you know, our family's gone through it, Mm. like through it. Um, I've got kids who have struggled and walked through brutal things and we had armies praying for them. Mm. And, um, the, 
the ease or the healing or the the release or the the other side of that that desert or that brutal thing didn't come the way I wanted it to um does that mean that the answer was no or that Jesus didn't hear my prayers or was it God's will that you know I don't no, I think he's present with us in all of that. Um, but yeah, I've I've wrestled with him. I've, you know, <laughs> mm. come on. Yeah. Um, I've wrestled with the reality that, you know, my upbringing, my parents were not married. My mom was a cocktail waitress. My dad was a lounge singer. They were both alcoholics. Um, I came to Jesus at 12 years old. I grew up in bars throwing Shirley Temples back at three in the morning with, you know, really unsafe places all the time with my parents and then came to the Lord at 12 when my mom's best friend invited her to church. She said, no, she asked permission to invite me to church. And she said, yes. Part of my testimony was that in spite of the environment I grew up in, I was protected. Like I felt like God protected me. And then I become a mom and my kids who have two parents who married and loved Jesus and love them weren't protected. So I've had to wrestle with my theology of my faith mm-hmm. um but i can't deny god's presence and i can't deny his faithfulness even in the most difficult of circumstances and um i've walked through a lot of crap and i've seen him in the middle of it i've um and i've seen him i've seen him bring beauty for ashes and i can share about that another time but mm. um so so yes, I I I the longer you you walk with Jesus the or, or, or and have a relationship with God, the more you realize you don't know. And, but I'm okay with not knowing because I'm mm. not God. And if I could figure it all out, then that would be a problem. Yeah. So good. That's a good button, I think, right? I think so too. Yeah. That, that feels like a good button. Well, I'm glad you guys think that. No, oh, Jeff. What do you, what, 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 Jeff? What's your truth? Let's go another two hours. <laughs> Let's do it. Let me make I'm up some good. more questions. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What's the uh, best advice you ever received, Andy? Oh, uh, well, it started with what are you consuming <laughs> hey, <yes>. this week? <laughs> I am consuming nonstop, and I, I, you know, we went really late here tonight. I am consuming. Uh, what's the Kevin Costner? Yo, Yellowstone. Yo, Yellowstone. Yo, Yellowstone. Yo, yo, Stone. Yo, 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 seventy Yellowstone. Waterworld. Yeah. God. Yes, it's I'm consuming the West. every Timely. single Timely evening reference. Yellowstone. That is all I've been consuming this week, from nine o'clock to like one a.m. Or sounds 10 like 10 you're enjoying it. I am. I when I listened to the first two episodes a couple of or watched a couple of episodes a couple of years ago. I'm like, nope, this is boring. And then everybody kept saying, oh, man, you know, it's still so good. So we ended up getting Peacock a couple of weeks ago. And now I come home from work. And we, Tani and I don't even say, hey, how's it going? I love you. Blah, 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 blah. Shut up. Sit down. She's like, sit down, okay, I watched, on. I watched season two, episode one through four. Okay, you need to catch up tonight. Okay. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, no, it's not awesome. Stu- but it's just it this. is awesome. I watched Yellowstone. It's fantastic. Okay, great. Yes, It's fantastic, Jeff. <laughs> And I'm glad that you finally recognize how fantastic it is. I think it's interesting, Jeff. <laughs> Have you guys watched 1883 or 1923? Not yet, no. but I hear they're crazy. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> they're so crazy. I heard people oppressed other people and then they took their land. Gosh darn it. I hear it. the 18 one is like nuts. Yeah. And that's yeah. a different century. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been watching The Bear. Have you guys heard oh, of the yeah, bear? It's good. Yeah. The bear is it's a Brown drama Black. TV show about a guy who takes uh, his brother dies and he takes over his brother's restaurant. And he and he came from the way the story goes the most prestigious restaurant in the US. Yeah, like a he, Michelin like rated. a million Michelin star rated restaurant. There's he, only three. He was. Is this real? Is this a documentary? Million. It had a million stars. It had a million stars. <laughs> That's more than three. <laughs> I told you it was the best. We're all six <laughs> years old today. Yeah. <laughs> it was the best. It had a million stars <laughs> to it, and they served dino nuggets and French fries. And it was pretty much the best. 
The best. <laughs> so you can understand why he was considered the best. I love Jimmy Dinos. <laughs> anyway, so um, and he's dropped in so, like this little greasy spoon. This, this little super greasy, grungy. It, where do uh, one watch this? It's in Chicago. In Chicago is where this uh, restaurant is, and that's it's where real. you can watch it. You have it to go is to real. Chicago. You have to go to Chicago to watch. No. It's a documentary. It's service? not a documentary. Uh, it's okay. a drama. Okay. Uh, it's on Hulu. Hulu. Okay. Yeah, and it is good. And it's Good. got the dirty dregs of the restaurant industry, um, and it's it, but it's it's cool. The, the characters are cool, and it is grimy. Yeah, Fargo's good too. Yeah. Oh, Fargo. Have you been watching Fargo? Mm-hmm. Wait, they have a TV oh. series they have now. A TV series and each, <laughs> okay, each okay, I'll have to watch that. A, it's it's produced the last, by the last season has Jody Foster, uh, John, John Hamm, and. Uh, I forget her name. She was in Ted Lasso. Um, but yeah, it's pretty great. Well, whenever I think about John Hamm, I can't think about much else. So Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> I always think about the fact I always think about the fact that they he was in that um fantasy football league with Adam Carolla and they had the rule that if uh, and there was a bunch of other celebrities and they had a rule that if you lost or if you won, you got to kick somebody out the next year yes and some nobody like someone's and cut. they don't know until they show up for the next draft yeah like you're gone out yeah. and they and so some some nobody won like it was somebody's cousin won the whole thing and he kicked john ham out <laughs> of the next season and john ham had to come to the draft prepared for the new draft only to learn he's been kicked <laughs> out <laughs> That is a Fargo moment. Yeah, take John Ham to the uh, take him to the uh, wood chipper there. Okay. Oh, you gotta okay. get him out of here. You gotta get him out of here. <laughs> sorry, sorry, hey. sorry, John. John, if you just jump in the wood chipper, that'd yeah. be fantastic. I'm sorry, it's not gonna work out for you this time, Bob. Alrighty. Well, I gotta you have some lefts. I had something chambered about something super heady that's boring and nobody cares about. So I'll just say, well, to the wood chipper you go, Zach. I've rediscovered love on the spectrum. Oh, uh, it's so ridiculously and, stupid. Uh, no. and I'm behind. You called them stupid. You can't do that, Jeff. The views of Jeff Pearson do not represent the views. They of do. Beer they do. Shut up. You enjoyed it. I watched you enjoying it. I did don't, not enjoy don't it. Pretend Regardless, like you did enjoy. I it. wanted to throw up. This is what Jeff's consuming now. This is so I I just I'm on the spectrum. I can just say whatever I want to whenever. I'll just say I wow. <laughs> wow. That's well there's our clip. Pregnant uh, pause. So much for monetization, YouTube. We were hoping to make some money with this podcast, but this is the final one. Never mind. Thanks for joining us on our final podcast, Gina. <laughs> oh, anytime. You're welcome. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's inspiring. The uh, there's it's inspiring in that when they communicate, they just communicate. And I hide behind so many I've got so yeah. many veils I have up uh, like I'm wearing a mask all the time. Um even when I think I'm not, I I still am. I care way too much about what people think and just to watch uh just beautiful image bearers that just Hey, I'm just gonna say it like it is, and it's yeah. Sometimes it's, it doesn't work. Sometimes it's like uncouth or whatever, but it's do authentic. You, do you think you might want to pursue uh, a career in illustration? <laughs> no, nope. I don't. Does that mean we can't date? <laughs> I guess. Oh, so. uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's the general reaction. Yeah. yeah. Just, and I know it's edited to make a TV show. Yes. But that's what makes me want to so throw up. It's so sweet. It's well, so that's sweet. When you make TV, you have to edit it. <laughs> but I don't doubt the people there that are just, you can tell when it's like, no, they just say what they think. And it's it's beautiful. So now, Gina, in addition to what you're consuming, the final question that we've kind of gone off the rails, but we used to ask a lot is if you're walking through the gates of the New Jerusalem and you get walk-in music. Yeah. Oh, no. So I don't know if you want to close with what your walk-in music will be or if you want to just tell us what you're consuming and then do the walk-in music or vice versa, but go What's for con- it. consuming? Like anything, book, book, music. What? This week. Please. What's captured your attention yeah. that you love? What, in, what content have you been... Content. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. A, it doesn't a even show. have to be. It doesn't have to be content. Sometimes yeah. it was like running for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have like three books that I'm reading right now. I'm reading um, 
uh, the making of biblical womanhood. So talking about going through that kind of the historical, how do we get where we mm. are and what, it, what, what got tied up. Um, uh, I death to deconstruction. I just finished by Josh Porter. It's a great book. Mm. It's his journey through deconstruction. Now he's a pastor. Um, would he hate me? Do you think? Not at all. Okay. You guys would get along. Great. Mm, okay. uh, he's got to meet you first. Then he can. Hate I like you. to make everything about me, but so thanks for yeah, indulging. No, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I've been going back to old school music. I've been digging up old things. Um, baby, baby. No, <laughs> no, but I don't know if anybody ever remembered Leslie Phillips. You're probably too young. So back in the early days, she wrote songs that turned into worship songs like Strength of My Life and stuff. Oh, yeah. But then she started Be kind strength of. Strength of my life. That one? Yes, but she started kind of going. She. Um, actually is married to T-Bone Burnett and they oh really yes so Weird. now now she's Sam Phillips but at that time she started moving towards like some kind of cooler music and the Christian industry just shut her down and so she changed her name went secular and so she's the one who did all the music for um uh what's the uh I'm gonna totally blank on it it's the all the chicks like it, but the series that Gilmore Girls, all the music she did, all the oh, music yeah. for them and stuff. That show is on a loop in my house. On a loop in your house. So yeah. the the all the transition music and the Oz and the thing that's Sam Phillips, um, but she was Leslie Phillips. And there's an album mm. that's in between um, before she went here that is awesome. Really, <laughs> I've been listening to that. Yeah, it's kind of like '80s. It's like it, she almost has a Cindy Lauper sound to her. Anyhow, so yeah been uh, enjoying that nice all right so you're walking through oh god the gates of the new know. jerusalem what song comes to mind and maybe who's who's escorting you in there living or dead you're what simply the, the best no. maybe it's oh i'll i'll say this Norm has a song on his first album called Giovanna Marie. It's Aww. named after me. Aww. So we'll have that. We'll have that play. And probably Norm's with you. Norm's with me. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> I can't I can't let you get away with that. That's beautiful. Yes. And I believe you. Now pretend you tell people it's it's gotta be somebody who's deceased. Pretend that was a lie. <laughs> what other song and what historical figure you know just historical for poops and giggles figure? i don't know living or what? dead who would who would walk you in who uh, would walk? give us a song that people <laughs> know or something that jumps to mind for you uh okay this, this there's no meaning to this but today it was really funny we were listening to kirk franklin <laughs> like that? do you want a revolution woo, woo. do you remember that <laughs> oh my, wow all right deep cut <laughs> that works no, you want to? No, that would get people hyped. No, that's great. <laughs> it's, it's There's a no great hype song. Yeah, it's it is. Like, there, there are no wrong answers, despite what right. Zach just implied that your yeah. first answer was wrong. There yeah, are no wrong, wrong answers. It wasn't wrong. I just wanted to explain. That would be a blast. All right, this this is good. By the way, we forgot. We we do have one more. Uh, David, what have you been consuming lately? Give by the way, one. David, yeah. David, are you? Get up on that mic. Dude, David is laying on the ground right now. <laughs> David, you get up. Throw the microwave. Uh, uh, mic. Consuming. <laughs> All right, thanks, David. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I know. I've been spending a lot of time with family, so I'm not really watching a lot. Um, that's good. Consuming I, uh, family counts. Consuming family. Um, You're a cannibal. And making, oh, that's making gross. Music. I've been consuming the making of music. Oh, oh nice. nice. Um, that's good. But I've been reading. Uh, there's a there's a book called No Bad Parts. Um, it's about kind of a therapeutic model that um, helps kind of describe. It's 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 very similar to a lot of other uh, therapeutic models in the like essence of it, but mm -hmm. the wording and the way that you're able to kind of see uh, how it applies in in your internal world. Um, it's been really fascinating. That's cool. Mm. Clearly, that author's never played with volunteers on a worship sun nope. stage <laughs> on a Sunday morning. So, because there are bad parts, let me there tell are you. Bad parts. Yeah. Mm. Can we do a whole episode that just talks about bad worship moments? Oh my gosh. 
Yes, but first we'll do another episode about all the shit you've been through that we didn't get to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Be a great time. Uh, Gina, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, yes. This was awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank- I hope any of it made sense. No, it was I great. appreciate it. And thanks for going through our experiment here of trying the... Uh, the uh, yeah. the questions out of a Mandalorian helmet. This I mean, is the way. It's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like totally. it is appropriate. Um, but yeah, no, this this was awesome. Well, I appreciate appreciate each of you guys a lot. So thanks. All right, so thanks one more time, Gina Stockton dot com. Mm-hmm. G I N A Stockton. Yep, Stockton, like Learning Stockton, California. Like <laughs> Gina Stockton dot com. <laughs> Gina Stockton on Instagram. Yeah. Sacred Space Podcast. All right. Those are all the good places to find you. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to get at us, uh, listeners and viewers, you can catch us at Bros Bibles Beer on all of the uh, all of the socials. And if you want to email us, Bros Bibles Beer at gmail dot com. And we haven't we haven't gone for this uh, in a while. The uh, voicemail anchor dot fm slash bbb pod. Leave us a message. And we do like the uh, we do like the comments in the YouTube. The YouTube's, in yeah, the YouTube's. As no matter how in, unhinged, in the YouTube, if you place inside the YouTube's a comment, <laughs> then you, we will that? delve within and find it, unearth that comment, and we may read it uh, within the podcast. But so, yeah, you keep touching him. You touched him a lot he's, tonight. He's stuck. Yeah. Hey, Andy. Yeah. Grace. Peace. Cheers. Cheers.